2,000 fish are dead from an aerator? Is that even possible? Stay tuned and I'll tell you the rest of the story. Hi, Mark here from AmericanAeration.com and today I want to um, talk about a video that I found and you know like you I check out YouTube for various videos and I found one posted by a fellow who had an aerator installed in his pond. Uh, he, they may have done the installation themselves but they had some trouble getting it going and so they called the dealer that sold it to them to come out and get it running which they did and long story short they got the system running and then they simply left they they didn't talk to them didn't tell them anything and the guy came out the next morning and started to find fish floating in his pond and before the thing was done he estimated that he probably lost 2,000 fish or more over the next few days and uh, he confirmed that he pulled out about 1,500 dead uh, while he was there over the weekend I think and there's a couple lessons to learn from this this story uh, first of all it's really important when you install an aerator a subsurface aerator for the first time in a pond and this was an old pond he said in the video it's probably 60 years old or more so you know there's some muck accumulated at the bottom a lot of lot of fish good sized fish and it was not super hot weather but it was starting to warm up pretty good and so when you have those kind of conditions and I think even erring on the side of caution when you put an aerator in and you start it up you want to be very gradual about it because these do oxygenate but they also mix a lot of water from top to bottom in the pond they're supposed to do that but in the process if you start it up and go too too much too fast you start to release a lot of unwanted things out of that muck. You stir it up too much and some gases come out and you can have a pretty rapid oxygen drop despite the aeration going. It just can't keep up with the, the rapid shift. So to start these up you want to run the aerator about 20 to 30 minutes the first day. Shut it off. Second day you can double that run time and each day you can double the run time up to 24 7. It takes about seven days or so to get there but it's a really good precaution to take with pretty much any pond with fish in warmer weather unless it's an absolutely brand new pond with no muck at all on the bottom and even then I might go slow if I've got fish in there already so the second part of the story which was a little bit confusing to me and I I don't have an answer as to why this dealer or the installation team didn't take the trouble or the time to tell the guy about the startup or you know maybe they didn't know about the age of the pond which I, I find hard to believe because when we work with people we try to get a lot of background information we need the size and depth of course but you need to know about age and and what is happening in there maybe that wasn't discussed or maybe the team doing the installation just wasn't informed or wasn't trained very well I don't know but it, this is such a well-known thing in the industry that you start up gradually in ponds like this that I, I can't figure out why it was missed. Kind of to add insult to injury though, the guy never got any paperwork on the aerator either. And in the manual itself, I think it's on page eight at the bottom, it talks about this gradual startup process. Had he had the paperwork, uh, he may have noticed it, who knows? May have noticed it and, and stopped the process or at least figured out what was going on. And, um, I will say to the dealer's credit they did replace or agree to replace the fish that they had uh, lost over a period of time and I think that's fair. They also provided the guy with a, a package of treatment uh, a bundle if you will of, of products and gave that to him at their cost which I think was was fair too. I do have a problem with the bundling of some of these treatments uh, it's not something we typically do and I'll tell you why see the there's a very good chance if this guy had issues with algae or odors or things like that it's possible that aerator all on its own could have taken care of the problem or improved things significantly to where you may not need to add anything to the pond 
I would say, especially if this pond has never been treated with a copper algaecide, you have a chance of seeing the aerator improve an algae condition all on its own. And if you don't need to spend more money, why do it? The, the bundling of these treatments, though, sort of set you up in a way because it's fine to put the aerator in, come in with this, this treatment regimen behind it, but you don't really know in this mix what actually helped the situation. Uh, they suggest using them all in some kind of a sequence and you really don't know what was necessary and what was not. And so for him, this pond owner, he's probably going to think that this bundle as a whole improved the pond's condition never really you know looking at the aerator as anything other than a foundational tool and each year or maybe subsequent uh you know twice a season or something he could be buying one of these bundles and it's a great upsell it's uh it's great for business i don't fault anybody for trying to do business but i just um, for us we don't work that way we put the aerator in we see how it does 30 to 60 days we we monitor things if we have to add something after about 60 days, chances are it'll be a beneficial bacteria product to try to clean the pond up a bit and support that work. And we will add products in as we go, as they are deemed necessary, not just work with this package of things that some may help, some may be totally unnecessary. And uh, to me, it is not the most, um, you know, responsible use of your funds to, to, to work that way with the pond. If you're fine with those bundles, if you found success with them, I'm not knocking it, but it's just not the way we kind of uh, like to do it. I'd like to kind of be minimal in terms of what we put in these ponds and we target what we put in, you know, so that it's meant for the, the problem at hand instead of some generic coverage of things. So, I, you know, that's probably the only other issue I have with this whole thing. And so the moral of the story and I, I have to thank the guy for posting his experience. It's very good for people to know. If you're putting an aerator in an old pond with fish, take your time. Don't get in a hurry. Uh, if you're having someone do it professionally, trust but verify. You know, make sure that you know how this is all supposed to go when they get things going. Even if they don't bring it up or tell you, they should tell you if they're responsible about it. The second thing is that if you have an aerator that is installed professionally and you've paid for that aerator, you deserve the paperwork that comes with it. Ask for the manual warranty information and, and ask about maintenance. And none of this stuff is hard, but if they're not telling you that information, you, you should ask for it. I would also go so far as to say if you're having a management company put additives or treatments in your pond, you have every right to know what those are. Now, maybe they don't feel comfortable giving you brand names and specifics just to protect their business, if you will, but you have every right to know what's going in there, and so be sure to ask. Finally, in terms of these bundled uh, add-ons, it's okay if you're fine with those and you're happy with what you've gotten out of these packs, that's fine, but understand that a lot of it is just upsell. It's just a way to extract more money out of your pocket. And it's a common business practice. I mean, I'm sure that it's it's fine. It's safe for people. It just costs you more money. And so be aware that an aerator alone may do enough. And if it doesn't, you can be very targeted with the treatments you use after that to keep your costs as minimal as possible and get the results that you want out of any kind of effort to improve the pond. So anyway, I've uh, left a link to his video down below so you can hear more about his story if you'd like. And as always, if you have questions about your pond, pond aeration in general, reach out to us at AmericanAeration.com. We'll be happy to help. Have a great day wherever you are.